Hello everybody on this Good Friday. This is B.B. Davis, publisher and founder of 1021 Magazine. Bringing you my POV and the highlights of what happened in Tennessee with representatives being expelled. Three attempts, two men, one woman, ending results the woman remains. We have in America, the United States of America, the right to speak freely. And when you are elected official, you have the right to represent your constituents, the people that you represent, the people that voted you in to office. Also, when you are in certain forms of office, there is what you call rules of engagement and decorum. But what we've seen, even through the bylaws of every state that could have different vibrations within thereof of how to conduct yourself, we've seen passionate constituents representing their people, their districts, go among their people to let them know we are with you. This is why a lot of people vote people in. Because you're standing on the principles that many feel strongly about. Not everybody may feel strongly about it, but they exercise their right to go out. The words used was that it was inciting a mutiny. If we're talking about inciting a mutiny, we have a president who never served jail time for his words and his action standing out as people raided our U.S. Capitol with death and mayhem that has never been seen before. He didn't get expelled, and this is the leader of the United States voting in. There was no chaos of that magnitude for these representatives that went out there. And there could have been other ways than this. So now we have conversations among ourselves on social media platforms. Do you think this right? Do you think this is not right? Do you think this right? Do you not think this is right? Some people are in between and some people just want to have something to say because they keep keyboard bandits and hey, this is my way to spew whatever narrative I want to. I, I do feel that all of this could have been handled differently. Because the point is that we have a gun problem. We have a gun control problem. And we need to find someone and a body of people who are going to sit down as elected officials and hear all sides and find a better resolution than what we are getting. Because children are dying. People are dying. Children are dying. People are dying. And just because it hasn't touched you, whoever this applies to, myself included, doesn't mean for you to feel any less passionate when you are a body of lawmakers that can make it happen. Now I've said this before and I've said it unapologetically. I'm about my 2A. I'm all for it. I am legal to carry. I come from a military family. I come from a family that's pro 2A. Hunter gatherers and protection without pause. Without pause. And I don't want my gun rights taken from me. But I also know that we have a problem with children dying when people who have no business having 
certain types of firearms in their possession. So we need to work it out. We need to work it out. It needs to be worked out. How are these guns getting distributed? Task force of where they're getting the guns. Facts and checks on gun shops, online, offline, all of that. Because believe me, that little timeline of what's going on can really be deciphered if you want to. We who believe in our 2A and our guns, we need to keep it real and not act like a lot of others who misrepresent us in vigilante mode. We earned our right to carry because we are not sinister and we're not going up in places to kill people just for the hell of it. We earn it because we are responsible gun owners. And if we don't show ourselves a proof and voice up, it looks crazy. We had earned ours by being somewhat of moral and having decorum. When you run the background checks, fingerprint. I've been fingerprinted so long to just like, hey, here we go, here we go. <laughs> so we've earned it. That's why we're passionate to keep our guns and not have the gun laws so stringent. Where we cannot protect ourselves, be in a situation where you can protect others and protect our families. But it's out of control. And when you have the power as a body, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, instead of worrying about explosion, hey, calm down, everybody calm down. Even when you're talking about a history of their this and that, listen, we've got to get it under control. We've got to get the the gun control controlled. And a lot of people talk to me. I have a lot of people talk to me as a public figure and a platform, and they say, "Hey, B, B, B." And you can tell the ones that are about, they're not about guns. And I quickly come back if I needed to give a refresher course. I'm strong 2A. And I'm never changing that. Because we've seen it slowly in the past 10 years where law enforcement in many places are just overwhelmed, not enough staff trying to clean up any type of corruption that could be there. If there's no corruption there, they're trying to bring in people because of the lack thereof therein. Because the crime rate has gone up. Because boom, back to we got a problem with these guns. We need to get some kind of gun controls for people who shouldn't have it in their hands. You shouldn't get riled up when you know you've earned it and you have all that you need. You need to be getting riled up for these crazies out here who do not earn the right. And I'm all for how different states are moving about how you can carry without this, without that. But I do feel when you make those kind of moves that at least I'll I give you way leeway than what many of us had. These new people who cannot get the access to being gun owners. I feel like that needs to be stipulated that at least two times out of the year you go to some type of gun training to keep that. Even though you're not going through all the paperwork like many of us did and we earned. And not just have willy-nilly. But for these young men to be ousted, I just feel like it's more to the story. Some of the Republicans have said that it has been going on and you, you know, now is the time to stop. But I felt like this was straight overkill. 
And it doesn't look good for Tennessee at all. Because people are out there protesting about lives lost. If you've ever experienced loss, which most people have, you don't get over it, you get through it. Some days, it washes over you and it's just a downpour of emotions. Don't want to get out of bed, don't want to do nothing because of the loss. Can you imagine? Your child, her children, gun down and teachers who came to work and said goodbye to their families and this person just comes in. Did you see the video? She shot through that glass and it was like, whoa. These people want to take people with them. How in the world did she get that kind of assault right? And then, you, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and name a lot of other incidences, but listen, we look bad. We look bad as United States of America. With all this freedom, we've let this slip out of control. And if you are a gun owner, you know that we've earned the right to bear arms. And we have to look it in the eye of other people who are out of control and straight psychotic evil to anybody losing their lives when I'm out in these streets here I'm on alert more than ever before because the times have changed where you have to have all eyes on deck. How you move. And haven't we just seen enough of the loss? To say we are the power, we are the platforms, but those who are elected in to Let's try and make it right as much as we can. Let us not go down that path of holding these offices and we don't let people feel that they're being heard. Just because you may not have to do it like that, this is a passionate moment. And again, yes, you need to have decorum and all of that, but We've got to stare the problem in the face and try and do something about it. And I'm going to tell you what really balls me so much is that our parents, the baby boomers, are on the sunset. And those of us 50 and hours, we are Generation X. Give it to me like. Since when have we lost our complete senses? We were the game changers after the baby boomers. The baby boomers were the game changers after their parents, who were somewhere born in the 20s and maybe 30s were like 20s. They changed a lot of stuff. And they champion for us more than not, even though they may not could understand what generation. X was trying to do with our MTVs and our thoughts of progressive movements picking up the torch and going way beyond in the age of internet they didn't mean for us to go start acting like we back in 1800s not generation X and that's what I saw and heard the ideology is how you talk to someone. How are you going to just make that move instead of being the bright generation X that said, we're not going to be like our grandparents. We're so proud of, and, and hey, you know, you had some grandparents, great grandparents that was making moves back then. But you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the, the whole generations as a whole, how they're representative. Generation baby boomers were off the hook. The 60s, civil rights. 
Woodstock, Watts, I mean, hey, they held it down. But Generation X has no sense in trying to act archaic. Because we are one of the most magnificent generations to be generations of the baby boomers to be acting archaic. <laughs> Come on. Rebel yell. Even in decorum. How dare we set ourselves in to having these kind of behaviors? And a lot of people are saying the Austin uh, was not race related, but I feel a little bit that it was. We need to stay on focus and we need to stay on task and get in the gun controls for the people who don't deserve it. For the people who don't deserve it. For the people who don't deserve it. For the people who didn't earn the right to bear arms. For the people who don't have the intelligence that is a privilege as a right to bear arms. There are some countries and even some states inside of the United States that cannot. It's a privilege. And I, I at 52, I am not going to live, even all the way to if I become a centurion, where, listen here, gun owners, <laughs> two A's, strong two A's like myself, we are not going to be disabled from being gun owners in the TF 2A. But we need to be more responsible and work with those to help get these gun laws and not act like it's just an attack on our rights. We, we responsible and earned gun owners are going to keep ours. But if we don't get in the trenches and look it in the face that it is out of control, we need to make sure we clean that up. And you who are voted in, it was a very shameful day. It's disrespectful to every parent who lost their lives, their children's who lost their lives, and the teachers that lost their lives. It's disrespectful not just for what happened there, but for all over this United States. I, I'm i not even going to bring up the names because it's painful. It's just painful. I watch those documentaries of all of those shootings that happened way back and people are still feeling the effects. The world beyond the United States, outside of the United States, they look at us. They're already sizing us up. They're already saying our dollar is not worth a hoot. Not worth a good damn. They're going to find other ways. They're devaluing our dollars. A lot of them don't see us as a superpower anymore. There's even talk on the boards here that we don't seem like we're just connected. We need to come together and this didn't, this just added right up on the list. This just added on the list, on the list. Then it sent the spy balloons over, listen. <laughs> and then we go do this. We just seem so divided and so unhinged. Wow, eyes are all on us. Eyes are all on us. We need to get it together. And when I come back, I'm going to be moving through these uh, Good Friday streets. And I'll be playing the clips of the two 
representatives and others on what went down. We have got to do better. It is a privilege. And it is an honor to me and to my family when all of us became owners who wanted to be gun owners. We were set down by those in our family who served in the military and our hunters and our gatherers who didn't. It is a privilege and an honor to be a gun owner responsibly and to have anybody out here who is misrepresenting us. We need to come together, understand people who may not feel as strongly about bearing arms, but those of us who do, we need to come together and get a handle on gun control for those who do not deserve it and don't see it as a privilege or honor. And that does not have any respect of man and life of others. I'm B.B. Davis, publisher founder of 1021 Magazine. Thank you so much for listening to me, my points of view. We got to get it together, let the officials. Up next, without interruption, um, as much as I can, we'll be listening into what happened in Tennessee. This is my points of view for Tennessee and for all over in the United States. Let us act like it's a privilege and it's a right. And let's address what's happening. Generation X and everybody under us and some who are still over us. Let's get it together.